I made this smoked brisket using YouTuber Adam Ragusea's recipe. And here's Adam Ragusea's brisket from his own recipe video. Terrible, I know. So how did I pull this off? Well, all his recipe needed was the following few small tweaks. Adam started his recipe with a brisket separated by its two muscles, the point and the flat. For beginners, this is a fantastic idea because you don't have to trim the brisket as much. So to stay true to Adam's recipe, I did the exact same thing. But this option is incredibly expensive. Normally, you can get a whole brisket with both parts of the muscle attached for about three to four dollars a pound for prime grade. However, buying the brisket in two parts cost me five dollars a pound for the point and eight fifty a pound for the flat. Absolute madness. So for the home cooks out there, it's a little more work, but it'll be much cheaper to buy a full packer brisket and then separate it yourself. And I'll have a video linked in the description showing you exactly how to do it. First up is the flat, and this is both the easiest and also the hardest of the two muscles to prepare. The easy part is, like I said, there's no need to trim at all, but if you want, you can trim off some of the hangy bits and thin parts on this brisket, but again, totally not necessary. The hard part is, is that this is the leaner cut of the brisket, so if you overcook it, it's much less forgiving than the point, and it can dry out very easily. For seasoning, Adam's recipe is very classic with just coarse pepper, salt, and optional granulated or powdered garlic, which I am in fact opting into. Pretty much any seasoning will go well with brisket, in addition to salt and coarse pepper. And you can add as much seasoning to your own personal taste, which I like to go black pepper heavy to help me get a nice barky crust. But definitely be careful with the salt, because over salting a brisket will absolutely ruin it. Rule of thumb, just use 1% of the brisket's weight in salt. So just like in Adam's video, I'll be using my trusty dusty Weber kettle to cook this brisket flat. And I'm going to be using my slow and sear attachment, which is exactly like the foil pan that Adam used in his video, except it holds double the charcoal and costs me $70. So do what's best for your budget. First thing I do is I put my wood chunks on the base of the charcoal grate, unlike Adam who placed his on top of the charcoal. Bearing the chunks will keep the flames from the burning wood from scorching the side of the brisket, as you can see in Adam's finished product. I'll also be rotating the brisket after the first couple hours to give both sides of the brisket an equal chance to be exposed to the radiant heat from the coals. That way this brisket can cook as evenly as possible. Once I get the charcoal lit, I will be cooking this brisket at around 250 to 275 degrees Fahrenheit. And to do this, you kind of have to play with the vents. The vents control the airflow, and there are three slots at the bottom of the kettle and four holes at the top. The less air to your fuel, the lower the temperature, and the more air to the fuel, the higher the temperature. In cold weather, using my beat up old Weber kettle, I usually have the bottom vents just barely open and the top vents wide open. But your mileage may vary, so adjust accordingly. At 250 to 275 degrees Fahrenheit, the brisket flat should be done in a few hours. But the reality is sometimes the cooker is not cooperating and the temperatures go way out of control. And that's why we go by signs and not by times. And the signs to look out for is that the fat on the brisket is rendered. We want it to be nice and soft. And we also want a deep dark color on the brisket like this, not like this. I don't care so much about the internal temperature or the tenderness at this point because that will all be achieved in the next step, the wrap. I'm using foil just like Adam because it's easily accessible to all home cooks and it does a great job of speeding up the cook to push past the stall. But you can also use butcher paper instead if you have it. So wrap up the brisket and get it back on the cooker for an hour or two to finish. And an easy way to tell if the brisket is done is to stick it with a probe. And if it feels like you're sticking it in a jar of peanut butter, then it's done. Shout out to pitmaster Harry Sue for that tip. But also make sure it's temping at least 180 degrees Fahrenheit before you take it off the grill. Now that it's done, you absolutely need to rest your brisket. My recommendation is that you let the brisket cool down for about an hour and a half at room temperature. Then put it in your oven at 140 degrees Fahrenheit for at least two more hours. This slow decline in temperature from resting this way will ensure that all the fat and collagen is broken down so the meat will be nice and tender when we slice it. So rest your brisket this way for both the flat and the point. Now, because of the high fat content of the point, this is a much easier cut to cook because the fat will keep the meat from drying out even if we severely overcook it. However, you absolutely have to trim this, unlike the flat, because like Adam demonstrated in his video, 
Too much fat is a terrible thing. So for the trim, I would be very aggressive on the fatty side. Trimming down the fat to about a quarter of an inch to ensure that it will completely render by the end of the cook. Also on the leaner side, make sure that you look out for this big piece of fat just in case your butcher didn't take it out. Your end result should look something like this. Just like I seasoned the flat, I'm using pepper, salt, and garlic, and we are ready for the cook. So to cook this point, I will be using a propane grill, just like Adam did, but I will be modifying his method very slightly. In Adam's video, he lined up his flavorizer bars with wood chunks and placed his brisket on one side and turned on the furthest burner on the other side. His idea was to get the line of wood chunks to slowly ignite one by one, providing smoke flavor to the brisket throughout the cook. Unfortunately, this did not work out for him. So for my cook, I'm gonna be using the modified Ragusea method. So I put the brisket fat side up on one corner of the cooker and a single wood chunk in the other corner on top of the flavorizer of this single lit burner. Once the wood chunk burns out, I replace it with another chunk until it's time to wrap the brisket. This propane grill I'm using today is actually a hybrid pellet smoker as well, which funny enough will make a much better brisket if I used the pellet smoker feature versus the propane grill feature. So if you're in the market for a propane grill, but you also want the capabilities of a pellet smoker, I'll have this Camp Chef Apex linked in the description if you wanna check it out. So before the wrap, we're looking for the exact same signs as before. So the fat is rendered, the crust is set, and I would say do not wrap until the internal has reached at least 175 Fahrenheit. The point is a much fattier piece of meat compared to the flat, so we can push this to get a maximum barky crust without worry of drying it out. Once those criteria are met, wrap the brisket in foil and back onto the cooker until it's done. For the point, I'm looking for the internal temperature to hit that trademark 203 degrees Fahrenheit, and also for my temperature probe to go into the brisket very easily. For the point, I really don't mind overcooking it a little. I just wanna make sure that there's no chewy fat or connective tissue when I take a bite of this brisket. So I've done Weber kettle briskets before, so I wasn't super surprised with the results I got from this cook, but I am really impressed with the Adam Ragusea propane grill brisket. It was really easy to do, and you can even see a smoke ring on this brisket. It's faint, but it's there. But anyways, enough stalling, let's go ahead and try this. The flat, so tender. Burnt end from the point. Best bite of barbecue. If I didn't make this brisket and somebody gave me this burnt end and told me that it came from a propane grill, I wouldn't believe them. That is really good. So not the most optimal way to make a brisket, but as you can see, it still looks fantastic and tastes delicious. And it is a much better recipe than Gordon Ramsay's Texas brisket. So check out my review of his recipe on your screen right now, and I'll see you guys over there.